How are you doing? Yes, welcome. It's Wednesday, October 12, 2016. Anderson Cooper is here. How are you doing? I speak on behalf of all of us, all of us, when I say you were brilliant at the presidential yeah. debate. Oh, okay. I just want to know, take us inside. Do you... You don't really don't want to go inside. I, it's really... I mean, I just know on my... like Speaking, on, a, speaking on behalf of myself, uh, I ate a whole pizza and drank a half a bottle of uh, red wine. Well, funny, so did I during the debate. And <laughs> you, they didn't show that ever during every cut. I could tell when the camera wasn't on me. I would just be shoving <laughs> pizza and drinking wine. No, but tell, like, is it nerve wracking to do that? It's, um, you know, I mean, it's a great honor to do it. And, and it's, uh, it's incredibly thrilling. I mean, it's to be on the stage with, you know, two people who have spent the last year uh, dedicating themselves to this. So, uh, I, you know, it's a, it's a huge privilege and an honor. And, and uh, you just don't want to, you try not to have the story be about you the next day. You really yeah. want it to be a debate between two people. So you're that, very, you were very, very good, and I really enjoyed it. And I, you know, this is I, I've been through so many elections with you, and um, and you've you just get better and better at these debates. And I wonder, do you do a lot of debate prep yourself? Because you always yeah. hear about the candidates. Yeah, you do. You spend. I mean, we spend uh, weeks. You know, prepping with research, and you know, uh, we have a whole team of people who are you know sitting in a room in Washington and New York trying to think up questions. And then, really, the last week is the most intense. I flew down to Washington. I spent the week with my team, and it's, it's like planning a, a future game of three-dimensional chess. Right. So you're trying to sort of plan out. Well, if I ask this question to this candidate, then the, you know, then we'll toss to this person. And so you try to plan out as much as possible, but. Right. You know, there's no way to predict what's going to happen. Uh, the, other, the thing that amazed me about this one is the biggest winner, I think, and the biggest star that came out of the debate was Kenneth Bone. Oh, there's Ken Bone, Kenneth yes. Bone. Energy. Energy. Who um, asked a, 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 such a sweet guy. I had a chance to talk to him before <laughs> no, uh, the debate, and also I interviewed him afterward. And it's funny, you know, the reason he was wearing this sweater, he said, is because he... Uh, he, his father, before he passed away, had helped him pick out a really nice suit. And so Ken wanted to wear the suit that his father had helped him pick out. But when he got into the car to go to the debate, his pants split open because he's gained a few pounds from the right, time right. when right. he uh, bought the suit. Just, so he had to do an emergency decision and he decided to go for the red Christmas suit. He made the smartest decision of Best his life. Decision I mean, ever. guys, right. we can all agree if Ken had been wearing, because he said it was like an olive colored suit, right. he would not have popped he the way popped. he popped. You know, and he had a really very serious question about energy policy yeah. he got to ask and he was enthusiastic about it. So, and I also love the fact that, like, I guess Am uh, Amazon, I think, has sold out. Out of this oh, red yes. sweater. Yeah. No, they've sold out yeah. completely. And that there's all these people who want to dress up for him. Like there's people That's dressing the up costume. for him as Halloween. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Isn't that incredible? Yeah, Andy Cohen and I are doing a show in St. Louis on Saturday. I'm hoping Ken's going to come. Oh, is he going to come? I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping he is. I, I, I called he will. him. Yeah, I called him. Wait, so. you called him? So now you guys are on a phone name basis? Well, I like mean, you're on a phone? He, he, was on, he was on my show the other night. And I was like, and so I said, like, oh, if you want to come to our show in St. Louis, you should come. He was like, oh, yeah, I think I will. So I was like, okay. Oh, my God. You guys see how easy it is? It's easy. <laughs> it's easy. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. That is exciting. I, I'm uh, just glad it's over. I'm glad my, my debate <laughs> is over now, you know. Uh, then on to the next one next week. What would happen if they called you and said, we need you to do the other debate? I think I'm good. I think I'm done. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm... I, You're good for the my hair, My hair turned gray and, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, you mean even grayer? Even grayer. I feel like it did. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I had a little bit of pepper left in there somewhere. No, and now still, it's all still, gone. I'm going to tell you, because I, cause I told you, I, I do study you a little bit. And there, you still have just the tiniest right back here. There's yeah, one little, little, tiny, little, little, little pepper patch. I'm hoping the pepper will come back. I'd like to. Uh, so I flew down there, um, you know, to, to St. Louis. And... You, you know, I'm obsessed. You know, I fly a lot. And when you fly a lot, you become obsessed with how people behave. And we've talked about this before. We talk about the... Uh, people the don't know how to behave on airplanes anymore. No. And uh, every flight attendant agrees with me on this. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, people, they take off their shoes and they put their hobbit feet up. And uh, it's, it's always... How you know, dare you refer to my feet as hobbit No, but it's, it's never someone with, like, lovely feet like yours. It's always like Frodo Baggins, you know, <laughs> with their big hobbit feet up. I was literally on a plane once years ago. Someone was clipping their toenails. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pew! Pew! Yep. And uh, so now there's a, I saw this article about 
uh, people with comfort pets. Yes. And, you know, people, there are, you know, amazing service animals that I have lots of friends who have served overseas who have service animals. Yeah, people have genuine needs. Genuine needs, for right. For emotional right. support. But then there's some folks who don't necessarily have genuine needs but want to travel with their beloved pet, which I totally get. I have a dog. I would love to travel with my dog. But my dog's not a comfort dog or a service dog. My dog's just a dog. Right. Uh, and so now I guess the TSA is trying to figure out how to kind of crack down on this because all these people are just bringing their pets on and like sort of sewing a little uh, a thing on that. collar on it saying comfort monkey, you know. Comfort and, monkey. And so they interview a guy here named Jason uh, who brings his marmoset um, on flights with him. And yeah, you know, and Marmoset is like, it's a monkey. Yeah, it's, it's I, you said Marmoset, monkey. and I was like, what is that? Yeah. I thought a Marmoset was some sort of mule, yeah. no, but it's not. Uh, it's first a of all, monkey. Uh, it would be amazing. I would love to have a Marmoset. I think it's an exotic animal, and you shouldn't have exotic animals as pets. But Marmosets are great. I'm not knocking Marmosets for the Marmoset community out there. Please don't send me emails. Uh, Too late. And <laughs> it's great if he wants to bring it on. I have no problem with it. But can you imagine if, like, a Marmoset got loose on your flight and, like, throwing and poop at you and yeah. just like all the things that I imagine a marmoset does. My favorite thing about him though is his job is, he's very stressed because his job, he works, uh, he has to travel every week because he works on innovative lighting for growing cannabis. Oh, I'm like, that's... How stressful is that? Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, and isn't the whole idea of the cannabis to like de-stress you in the first place? So Isn't it? Isn't anyway, it? yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know that don't was. Don't act like you don't know. They're but like. I also didn't know that was a job. You could have a job like I'm a lighting designer for cannabis. First I, of all, that's a genius job. And second of all, you should. You could get an emotional support animal. You think? Yes, your job is so stressful. I could be your emotional support animal. <laughs> Can you imagine me with a little collar, like emotional support? I do. No, I, I have a friend who has a dog who travels with the dog and has this thing on it that says like comfort animal. I'm like, you're not a service member. You right. like, you don't have a stressful job. What, what, you know, it's like, I like traveling with my pet. I was like, I get it, but I don't know. It, I feel, I feel it sort of takes away from those who really do need. Yeah, no, I agree yeah. because a lot of people are cracking down on that and they're making it hard for people. Right, they're making it hard for people who have people legitimate. People actually right. have a reason. Yes. Um, have you been following the scary clowns that are popping up? I don't understand the scary clowns. First of all, I've always been scared of clowns. So I feel like the rest of the country is Has just, just catching, up to, catching up to me. Right. And again, I don't want to upset the clown community. Right. Um, please address your emails to Kelly Ripa. Yeah, no, they uh, know, the clowns know I'm with them because we already did like a whole thing that regular clowns are perfectly safe and still Absolutely, Charlie no, there's nothing better than a regular they're clown. They're good for your health. Mm -hmm. um, but I heard Ronald McDonald had to go into hiding. That's what have I was gonna you? tell yes. you, Ronald McDonald has gone into hiding. Yeah. And now I say to you, the bad clowns have won. Because if I can't see Ronald McDonald when I'm buying my filet of fish, what's the point? of going to uh, McDonald's. Uh, no. I'm I, so sad about it. It's very strange. I don't quite understand the clown, but it's a whole thing. Like a lot of kids are, are, are worried about this. At first, you know, if I, my daughter came home from school and she said, why didn't you tell me about the clowns? And I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, the clowns, the clowns that are sweeping across the country. Uh -huh. And I said, well, first of all, um, it's been in every newspaper and it's been on the news every night. So maybe you should get off Instagram and check in with the world <laughs> because uh -huh. that's, where, that's right. where you find out the news. Um, and she, so she started talking to me about the clowns and how they're saying that they're gonna take over the, they're gonna take over the schools of New York City, I mean, I feel and so maybe she should stay home. And I said, oh, I see where this That's is going. Right, yeah. <laughs> I do feel bad for like party clowns and clowns who like this is their livelihood. Yeah, no, I do too. Yeah. I do too. I Because I, now I, they have to like go to their job and change, you know, in the bathroom before they can't go on the subway yeah. to their job because their people will run off the subway in terror. And you, we can all agree, and I don't know if you've seen this, but I've seen it many times, people who are driving to their clown job in their clown costume. Oh, all the time. And that makes yeah. you so happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I, I was at, uh, uh, I think it was a... Uh, Applebee's, yeah, it was an Applebee's in Orlando months ago, and there was a whole table of clowns, and I was like, oh look, it's a table of clowns. I was happy. But now that would cause panic. It would cause panic in the Applebee's, that's true. Right. Yeah, it was true. But, but for no legitimate reason, they seemed perfectly nice, they were very nice clowns. Were they, were they, um, 
Unclear to me why, who they okay. were. I didn't. They, I didn't they wanted wanna, a birthday party. I didn't want to engage because I felt like if engaged, they were going to like start pulling flowers out <laughs> and like, you know, going around while I was eating my, my artichoke dip, you know, walk around in the big red shoes. And I was just like, I'm just here to eat at Applebee's. I don't. Is that how you eat your artichoke this dip? This is how I eat. knife and a fork? <laughs> this is how I eat in a restaurant so I don't even have to engage with clowns. I love but you just acted out what you think. Well, it was also what I th you think clowns do. Well, of course, clowns. Like if you engage with a clown, you know Neil Patrick Harris. This is what it's like with him. He's a if, magician. Well, he's, oh, okay, fine. It's a it's a slippery slope. But, <laughs> But you know, if you engage with a clown, all of a sudden they're like, oh, let me show you a flower. You know? Oh, now he's a sad clown? Sad clown, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, because if you... Of course, of course Anderson's clown is a sad clown. No, if you don't... God forbid no, you have a happy clown. No, no, because then if the clown does the flower and you don't take the flower, then it's like sad clown. <laughs> And then they follow you in the street and they're going like this. That's a mime. That's a mime. I know, but clowns do mime too. <laughs> clowns are multifaceted. They're magicians, they're mimes, they're, they're I don't you know, they're amazing. They're clowns, amazing. send all of your hate mail. To send, in the clowns. <laughs> <laughs> send in the clowns. Send in the clowns. Did you see this couple? It's so amazing. Okay, so uh, I think they're a British couple and I'm not sure. Uh, we were trying to figure it out in the article. But I, of course, cannot read or see. Ah, they honeymooned in Malta. Anyway, uh, they okay. honeymooned in Malta. The so British. So this is their this is their fiftieth uh, wedding anniversary, and they put on their wedding clothes. Oh, that's so they, cool! Isn't that amazing? They found their wedding clothes in uh, in the loft, which I believe is the attic. They found their wedding clothes wow. up there, covered in dust. They didn't even realize they still oh. had them. And they put them on, and look, they still fit, and they look great. They look they? great. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yes, I, I gotta say, say I look like the guy now. No, you don't. I do. You I look don't. like I look more like the guy now than the guy then. When did that happen? Well, it's fifty years ago. I know, but do you remember when you were the when you were the youngest person in the room? Has everyone had this experience? Like, I feel like I used to be yeah. the youngest person in the room. Well, you were. All of a sudden, I'm no longer the youngest person in the room. There's people born like in the 2000s in my office. It's, yep. I'm like, I make a reference about, you know, I don't know, Sheila E. and there's a blank stare. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. I mentioned Billy Idol and they're like, huh? huh? What? <laughs> I w I'm looking at schools, uh, high schools for Joaquin because right. he's going to graduate this year. So I've been uh, it, looking at high schools and there was a girl uh, doing some work and they were showing me the work she was doing and she was doing a re uh, she was doing a, a project on um, uh, Scream Queens. And I said, oh, I love the show Scream Queens. And she looked at me and she goes, but aren't you like from the 1900s? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I am. Oh my gosh. And I said, not only that, I have a son from the 1900s. <laughs> because that is such a depressing way to think it's about such it. Such a crazy. We're from the 1900s. 1900s. But we are, a lot of us are from the 1900s. Yeah. Because that was a whole like That's 100 years so ago. Sad. Yeah. That's so sad. Wow. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, That right? is crazy. That is nuts. I also saw this thing online that um, uh, just, you know, you, you drink coffee. I do drink right. coffee. Right. I've, I've had like one cup because on, like on television. It. Yeah, I tried it once on TV. I didn't like it. 35% um, of Americans said they'd rather suffer through the workday with the flu than forego morning coffee. Oh. Is coffee that good? I don't understand. Is it really? Amazing. I don't, what's the... What, how can anything be that good? Like and that you, you know how you like that brown liquid, whatever that is? Is that a Diet Coke you're drinking? It's a Coke Zero. A Coke Zero. Yeah, yeah. It's a Coke Zero. Yeah, but I don't need it. I don't crave it. I, 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 if it was between the flu and my Coke Zero, I'd, I'd go, I'd go for yeah, I'd go for my Coke Zero. But well, that well exactly, make any sense. that's but, what they're saying. No, but I, I would not rather have the flu than my Coke. Is that what they're saying? They'd rather have they, the they'd flu? They'd rather have the flu than go away, than not have their morning cup of coffee. Huh. 
Yeah. I disagree with that. I think that that's an extreme, and I think that maybe those are people but that don't. The other thing is, like, you're talking about British people. Like, a tea is the other thing I don't understand. I mean, I like tea. Tea, don't get me wrong. I, the tea community, please do not send me emails. <laughs> but, but I've Thanks. never said to myself, like, oh, my God, I'm craving. A, like, in Britain, they're always like, oh, fancy a cup of tea. I've never actually fancied a cup of tea, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's never been like, ooh, some tea would really hit the spot. I like, but you, it's like, but, but yeah, it's lukewarm it, sugared water. Yeah, sure, I'll have some. No, but British people don't, they have it piping hot, piping. Ooh, uh, but I, it's like, literally, they're like, in the afternoon, they're like, ooh, a cup of tea, yes, it hits the spot. I'm like, what? What, Here, what spot is why. that? Where is the spot that the tea is I'm gonna satisfied? I'm going to tell you why, because you are one of these people that food doesn't mean anything. True, yes, yeah. like, right, yes. He doesn't ever go, I'm starving, oh, I'm dying for that, I'm dying to have that, or I'm right. craving that, or I want, you don't care about food. Food yeah. is more like to keep you alive. Yeah, but I have, you have to eat it, because what are you going to do? Do you know anybody else that has this thought process about food? Really? Uh, no, I don't know another person in the, on the planet that has that thought process about food. It's just you, one of those you, things you have to think about, like, what are you going to wear today? It's just one of those annoying things you have to do, but if I could do without it, sure, I'd do without it. You would do without food yes. if you could do without food. Yes, absolutely. You would save so much time in your day. Not that I'm doing so much, I, I'm just sleeping the rest of my, I would just, I would just sleep more, but I would much rather sleep than eat. You're like a large human cat. <laughs> Okay, I'll take that. You are. Uh -huh. I mean, when you describe yourself, like you yeah. take it or leave it. You're like, I don't care. It's true. Mm. I poop in a little box. Yes. Very similar. Yeah. I see the. I see the. the I, don't, I just. I, don't uh, I just am fascinated by your relationship with food. Well, you know, we all have very strange relationships. What can I say? I just. I never. I didn't grow up eating food. Like I literally. I, I've said this before, <laughs> but in my house. In my house, we didn't have food. My mom, we had Cars water biscuits, and there was Aquavit in the freezer. And that's basically, yeah, the, the, the one guy who drinks in the audience knows what Aquavit is. It's some sort of like liqueur or liquor. So that's when, when I was a kid, I'd open up the fridge and there'd be Cars water biscuits, and then the freezer, there'd be Aquavit, none of which I ever tasted. And, uh, and so I never, we, like okay, there wasn't so, okay. food, so and so for like get... dinner there would be like two little moisettes of lamb. I don't even know what a moisette is, but I was told because I'd be like, "What's this?" My mom be like, "It's a moisette," and then my mom kept saying to me like, "You need to gain some weight," and I was like, "You're not feeding me. I don't." There's no, and I would go to my friends' houses, and they would have they would have bagels and cupcakes underneath plastic things sitting out in the kitchen and I never wanted to leave. I thought it was the greatest thing. And then I would go back to my house and be like, the cupboards are bare. It right. was the strangest. My uh, kids feel that way about your house because you have fancy cereal and they're like, Anderson has fancy cereal. You don't give your kids fancy cereal? Well, I never let them have... Fancy cereal, I eat Special K cinnamon pecan cereal. Right. That's my fancy cereal. No, but to them that's fancy cereal. Oh, okay. I, like, I'm you don't not, do sugared cereal? I'm not a big sugar cereal. Really? Person. Yeah, I am more like a hot breakfast kind for of For breakfast, person. when I was a kid, I could eat whatever I'd want. Like, if I would eat something, so I would for the, I'd go for months, like for a month, I'd eat coffee ice cream for breakfast. Then I'd switch to a baked potato for breakfast. <laughs> and then I'd have spaghetti for breakfast. I would go through food periods. I love it so much. Yeah, that's... I just want to put a... I want you to go home and live with your mom for a month, and I just want to put a documentary camera in there and just watch. <laughs> I just want to watch what goes on right now, present day. I think... I, no, I, th I don't think I could last a month. Oh, well... We'll do, it for a week. we'll do it for a weekend. All right. Hey, we got a big show today. John Hamm is here. That's right. This is the new uh, series, Speechless Mini Drivers, here. A performance by Daya. And we're going to reveal who you voted for to be the 10 semifinalists in Live with Kelly and you co host search. I'm yes, very excited to see a, that. You're, are you? I am. I actually know one of the people who's in the uh, finalist, I believe. Stop it. Yes. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. No, I, I, I hope okay. she gets it. All right, it's time for uh, Takeoff Travel Trivia, everybody. <laughs> Sabrina Shaw. Hey. She's adorable. I like in this graphic how my hair disappears into the sky. Oh, yeah. Do you notice that? 
We should move the sky up a little so it's more, yeah. There, I'm sitting like this. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You're adorable. Uh, I'm a uh, loser. Hey, uh, say hi to Joyce Sprotlin from a Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Hey, Joyce, how's it going? Hi. Fine. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah. What are you up to today? How's uh, um, how's the weather there in Ohio? It's fun later today, and it's very pretty out. Oh, nice. Really, really good to see you guys. And Anderson, I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I think you should run for president. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I've always thought that. Well, that's very sweet. He's a very reasonable person and a hard worker. <laughs> I was on my honeymoon here. I, on, on the oh. boat? That looks, that looks yes, great. Yes, three years ago. Was that on a, on a cruise? Yes. We went on the Norwegian. First cruise I was ever on. How was it? Wonderful. I loved it. Nice. How long was the cruise for? Uh, seven days. Oh, wow, Perfect. nice a long time. How can yeah. you tell she's on a cruise? I can barely see the photo. Well, I, I, I didn't think, it's, think it's she was... It's giving me like an optical illusion. Well, I, I know, but, well, I don't know. I that just, was on a port of call when we stopped at St. Martin. I figured that's like the oh, backdrop on the boat. Yes, yeah, it, it was uh, at a call, at one of the ports we oh, stopped at. Oh, one of the ports of call. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, cool. All right, Joyce, we're going to spin the wheel, see what you're playing for, okay? <laughs> I love your hair like that, Kelly. Oh, thanks. I do too. Yeah. Thanks a lot. What do you What do you call that? Uh, 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 two, uh bra two braids. And two braids. Front. Okay, two yeah. Braids. I, I was call calling it, it sort braids. of a Heidi of the Mountain. Thing. Or a Heidi of yeah, the Mountain. Yeah, yeah. Like a Pippi Longstocking. Or a Pippi Longstocking. Thing. Remember Pippi Longstocking? Of course. I am Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> <laughs> she scared me as a kid. Anyway, she was a little scary. With Pippi. Uh, Joyce. There was something going on with Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> I'm just saying. Joyce, listen to this. You're playing for the Westin Cottonopoly uh, Ocean Resort Villas in Maui. I never told Ooh, that is my absolute dream place to go to. What? You what? That is my dream place oh to go God. to. Oh, my God. All right. Okay, listen. Fingers it's seven crossed. days, six nights, one bedroom villa. It includes a spa treatment per person. This trip is a uh, prize valued at $10,400. It's provided by Hotels.com. 20 seconds, one guess. Anderson's going to read the question. Don't screw it up, Joyce. All right. Okay. Brian Cranston appeared on yesterday's show. On what sitcom did we say Brian played a dentist? Uh, gosh. Talked about it yesterday. Big sitcom. Uh, oh, never. No. no. Uh, just name a big sitcom. Um, name the biggest sitcom you can think of. Bob, Bob uh, Newhart. Oh. Uh, that's a good guess. It's a good guess. You know what? That's no. a good guess. Uh, it's Seinfeld. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that was my actually dream place to go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, Anderson, Anderson gave you that horrible clue. Uh. <laughs> Mr. President gave you a bad clue. Oh, Listen, you're still going to get a great prize, okay. Joyce. You and a lucky member of our studio audience will each receive a $500 gift certificate from IKEA. So please pick a number between 1 and 226. Uh, 165. Oh, there we go. Congratulations, we've got a great show for you. John Hamm is here, so stick around. We'll be right back. Still ahead on live, a performance by Dea from the series Speechless Mini Driver. And coming up next, John Hamm. Now, wait a minute. I've, what? I've seen a pocket square before. That's yeah, a, I mean, that's this a, is like a pocket... Pocket carpet? Pocket, pocket <laughs> rug. It's I don't know. amazing. Well, it's a, just I in like case. It.
That's very go. nice. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm really thrilled by this. I'm, this is like the greatest thing. I was noticing this on camera, mm -hmm. but like, it's a daily affirmation for you. Live, Kelly. Live. <laughs> Just live. Live. That's, That's right. great. That when we go on the Every page. time a little coffee. Live, yeah. Kelly. Live, Just Kelly. Just live. That is what she says. Don't forget to live. Every morning when she looks in the mirror. Live, Kelly. Live. <laughs> one more. Just At one three more. three in the morning. One more day. Yes. <laughs> when you get here. Um, so now, you used to be, uh, and These yeah. <laughs> that That's happened. To keep it's a up. twisty. It's actually, wow. they sell them late night infomercials. Holy moly. It's great for your abs. <laughs> Engage the core. <laughs> exactly. I think I was doing that <laughs> right. this morning. We're In fact, all during the interview. Exercise. We're just going to sit here doing like this. You know what? <laughs> you guys, go get the... Go get the shake weights in back. Go oh dear, get the shake weights and we'll thing. do the shake weight while we do the, our core. Um, you were a teacher, which I did not know this before. I was. When, were you an acting teacher or? Uh -huh. I'm no yes. kidding. Uh, well, High school or I didn't say I was a good teacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh, when I was in college, like I was raised by a single mom, like whatever. I was in mm -hmm. daycare and after school and all that stuff uh, because my mom worked. Right. Um, so when I was in college, uh, I remember being like, when I was like a little boy growing up, there was never any guys in daycare. It was all women. Huh. So when I when I I went to the to the local daycare and I was like, you know, here's the thing, and I, I would like to help. And the lady was like, no, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hiring you. <laughs> and I was like, but let me finish. It's actually, and she ended up hiring me. I worked there for three years, like my my last couple years of college. I worked at a daycare, and then when I went, I graduated. I started uh, teaching back at my old high school because oh, cool. a similar thing. Like I, I wanted to give something back. I felt like I owed a lot to the school. Wow. Um, and um, and the the theater department had sort of exploded after I had graduated. For it wasn't because of what anything I had done, but uh, that just people were into it. Wow. And so they were kind of overworked, and so I came back and taught for a year. And you had some famous people. Well, some students in fact, yeah, famous. one of my one of my students is who I'm now working with on her show uh, is uh, Ellie Kemper from Unbreakable Kimmy no Schmidt. No kidding! Yeah. Wow! wow. So, yeah, that's just... <laughs> yes, look at that! Look at Ellie. That is so great. It was it was very cool, and even at 15, like she was a com incredibly and like composed, very smart, hardworking. Do you actress. still have Do you still have the urge, like as you're on set together, to to, to tell her that to, she's yeah, doing to tell her wrong? what she's doing wrong? <laughs> so I'm sure she would love that. Yeah, just give her notes. Uh, no, 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 no. She is uh, she is. I mean, even back then, she knew what she was doing. But it's really cool to it's great to see something like that happen to somebody who you genuinely have like. Nothing but the best. Well, you probably created quite a spark in her and in a lot of your students because I, that's how, I mean, that's what. Well, that happened to me with almost all my teachers. Like, I have, so I still have, uh, like, communication and emails back and forth yeah. with a lot of my teachers, and, like, it's important. It's yeah. great. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I love when my teachers show up here in the Tell audience. Us. And I'm like, oh. Tell We're going to take a quick break. We'll have more with John Hamm when we come back. The Joneses, where you play, uh, you play a very impressive a neighbor. Uh, neighbor, a neighbor with a secret. There's well, a deep, dark secret. Yes, uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, yes. We uh, my 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 wife and I, played by Wonder Woman. I know that's so cool. Uh, move into a, a, to to a new neighborhood, and uh, things are not quite what they seem. And Zach Galifianakis. Zach is uh, Zach and Isla play our our neighbors, and they're immediately suspicious of us because we don't look like everyone else. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, not the greatest uh, lesson to be learned, by the way. <laughs> you don't so judge a book by its cover. You should be suspicious of your good looking yeah, neighbors. Yeah, be suspicious of your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but it, uh, it, it uh, hilarity ensues and things blow up and then there's uh, crazy car chases and big laughs and uh, it's I, I don't know I, I love this movie it's 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 in a, and we were talking about this in a season where maybe we could all use something a laughter. nice and uh, yes. laughter uh -huh. and, and light yeah. uh -huh. uh, it's also the kind of movie that you can like go with your aunt and not have an uncomfortable car ride home <laughs> 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 which for me oh. is one of the first times. Yes. I know. This is your first experience. Yeah. Uh, I've had quite a few uh, uncomfortable silences after things I've been in with my aunt. <laughs> it's like, sorry. Yeah. That was my butt. Uh, we look forward to seeing it. It's Keeping Up with the Joneses. It opens on Friday, October 21st. Make sure you check out John here. <laughs>
you performed a song. I know. Which we loved. Oh. You're it so talented. Oh, yeah. thank you. I loved it so much. I love coming and singing on the show. You're right. still singing? Yes. Do you have time? With Not much. Right, right. But I'm writing as soon as I finish the show in February, because mm -hmm. we got we got picked up for our full season. Oh, that's which great. Which was very exciting. That's great. I'm going to do another record then, but it takes... um. It's quite hard to write songs when you're happy. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, uh -huh. It's much easier to be miserable and write music. I know I shouldn't really say that, but it's true. Uh -huh. No kidding. I'm glad to be happy and have more difficulty writing songs. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I oh, saw a great photo of you on the beach in Mexico, I think it was doing some yoga. Yes. Oh, goodness me. That's amazing. <laughs> My mother said, you put your bottom on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's a nice bottom. We <laughs> We, we were having such a good time. It was like, we were actually just doing handstands. It was uh, a proper holiday. We might have had a couple of margaritas. <laughs> oh, no uh, kidding. There might have been a few of those before the you're, yoga. You're lucky that you can still do yoga after a few margaritas. Uh, well, I think I can, but I mean... Yeah. And your son, uh, Henry, just celebrated a birthday, didn't he? Henry just turned eight. <gasps> wow, that's Already? awesome. Already? My oh. bad. Oh, oh my gosh, God. he's so cute. Adorable. What's he into? He is uh, sticks mostly and making bows and arrows oh, out of them. That's cool. I like that. That's he amazing. really likes to. He's that whole I, the whole idea and then wearing it and then stalking the cat in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Not with any intention to do it, but like yeah. as if he, as if it were a lion. Does uh, does he? Will he make his own Halloween costume? Is he a kid that will like make his own, or does he want you to? He wants to be Harrison Ford. Oh. oh. Well, <laughs> well it, as Indiana Jones, oh, not okay. just Harrison Ford, like okay. with an earring that'd on a talk uh, show. I think that'd be that. funny if he was Harrison Ford on <laughs> yeah. a talk show with an earring, <laughs> 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 like, like a fleece on, you know, <laughs> piloting a plane. <laughs> I should have qualified that by saying. That's funny. Each Indiana of my Jones. boys were Indiana Jones. I mean, that, it's quite yeah. retro for a kid, yeah, yeah. for an eight year old now. He's crazy about those movies. That's, That's so cool. So we're doing, and he wants a, he wants proper stubble, which, because at work, <laughs> yeah. I can get him real, yeah, that oh, that's real cool. stippling stuff. So. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, he's, oh, that's he's happy. He's happy about it. We have to take a commercial break. We come back, we're going to talk about your uh, groundbreaking new TV series. Really, a fascinating project. Yes, uh, it's it, really. Interesting. Is it the story of the writer's life? It's based. It's based on uh, on his experiences. Mm. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's super autobiographical, but it, it, it definitely aspects. He grew up with a member of his family who was nonverbal cerebral palsy. Um, I think the fact that this show is so funny is what will break down a lot of walls. Right. Um, yeah. I feel like able-bodied people have a very difficult relationship with people who use wheelchairs because they don't know how to interact and mm -hmm. laughter and just saying hi and it becoming, we need to typify it. Yeah. We need to typify it and I think what the show is doing is through humor. Um, and it, I mean, it is, it's an incredibly funny show. Yeah, and it, um, thank you. I really, I mean, that was first and foremost why yeah. I loved it. I mean, she's a pretty difficult, she's a difficult woman. She is. But, um, uh, I, it's funny, there was... Those are the best roles to play. I though. think so. And I think they're always conflicted and they're the ones that are the funniest. And the boy's it's name is Micah... Micah Fowler. Fowler. Yes. Fowler, yeah. He's extraordinary. He's amazing. Yeah. Micah is truly amazing. And um, it's, I think, having the time of his life, and I think you can see it, but he's... He's very funny and very sly and really a fairly typical teenage boy. Yeah, you must have learned yeah. a lot, I bet. Working. I've learned, I've learned yeah. an enormous amount about the, about the patience of having a conversation with someone for whom um, uh, communication is takes, it's a slower process. Mm -hmm. And we, everything is so instantaneous in our world now with our phones and our computers and instant knowledge. Just to sit quietly and just to have a slower paced conversation with someone, it's lovely and mm. he's a considered considerate, thoughtful young man, and mm. it's been, it's, it's great. And well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Tonight, 8.30 p.m. on ABC. Stick around, we'll be right back. Uh, co-host at the live with uh, Kelly and you co-host search and the votes are in. That's right. The playing field has been narrowed down to the top 10 contenders. Here they are. Okay. Go to our website right. Oh. Wait. Oh. What? 
Is this it? There they are. They're, oh, they're, no, right. They're, right, oh, they're right here. I thought we were going to announce that. <laughs> here they are. Ta-da! Go to our website right now to see who's in the running to be her co host for a for day. day. We want your feedback, so write a comment, make it a nice one, share your uh, favorite person on Facebook, or tweet about them on Twitter. And remember, you only have yourselves to blame. Also, be sure to tune in on Friday uh, when we announce the top five finalists who will be flown to New York to compete for the chance to sit next to this one for Kelly uh, for a day <laughs> and see if your favorites made it. Okay. Yes, yeah. I and we got a couple so emails too. Uh, Bonnie. Yeah. Uh, from Herndon VA says, yes, there are other people like Anderson with their eating habits. My husband could care less about food. As my daughter tells everyone, mama lives to eat and daddy eats to live. Ah, there you go. That's like, that could be our slogan for but, our children. Um, if we had them. Yes, if we had them, but the, a girl can dream. Casey uh, Chisholm in Yulee, Florida says, today my husband and I are celebrating our third wedding anniversary, but better yet, we're getting ready to meet our oh baby girl. I just got my epidural and put your show on. I'm feeling great. Watching live wow. from Jacksonville, Florida. Oh my God! All right! Oh my God! She's excited. So Push! You can do it! You can do it here. Let's hold hands and we'll like do deep breathing. Is that is that how you do it? I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> it's been so long. It's been a long time. Um, one more. Uh, let's see. Uh, Susan Dagali from Staten Island, New York says, I am like Anderson. I have never eaten a fruit or a vegetable. You've eaten a fruit or a vegetable. <laughs> yeah, I like fruit. Yeah. Pizza or macaroni. Never had a pizza? Wow. No cold cuts or condiments at all. No fish or Chinese food. What does that leave? I eat the same thing every day, but I love to cook and do it well. Wow. Well, says you, you don't eat anything you make. So I guess we'll have to take your word for it. Hey, thank you for being thank here you. today. I love you. Know, from The Walking Dead, Norman Reedus. Amy Grammer's here, and Carrie Adenov is my My daughter came home from school and she said, why didn't you tell me about the clowns? And I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, the clowns, the clowns that are sweeping across the country. Uh -huh. And I said, well, first of all, um, it's been in every newspaper and it's been on the news every night. So maybe you should get off Instagram and check in with the world <laughs> because uh -huh. that's where that's right. where you find out the news. Um, and she, so she started talking to me about the clowns and how they're saying that they're going to take over the, they're going to take over the schools of New York City. I mean, I feel and so maybe she should stay home. And I said, oh, I see where this that's is going. Are, yeah. <laughs> I do feel bad for like party clowns and the clowns who like this is their livelihood. Yeah, no, I do too. Yeah. I do too. I, I, Cause I, now they have to like go to their job and change, you know, in the bathroom before they can't go in the subway yeah. to their job because people will run off the subway in terror. And you, we can all agree, and I don't know if you've seen this, but I've seen it many times, people who are driving to their clown job in their clown costume. Oh, all the time. And that makes yeah. me so happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I, I was at, uh, uh, I think it was a... Uh, Applebee's, yeah, it was an Applebee's in Orlando months ago, and there was a whole table of clowns, and I was like, oh, look, it's a table of clowns. I was happy. But now that would cause panic. It would cause panic in the Applebee's, that's true. Right. Yeah, it was true. But, it would, but for no legitimate reason, they seemed perfectly nice, they were very nice clowns. Were they, were they, um... Unclear to me why, who they okay. were. I didn't, they, I didn't They wanted wanna, a birthday party. I didn't want to engage, because I felt like if engaged, they were going to, like, start pulling flowers out and like, you know, going around while I was eating my, my artichoke dip, you know, walk around in the big red shoes. And I was just like, I'm just here to eat at Applebee's. I don't Is that how you eat your artichoke this dip is how with I a eat. knife and a fork? <laughs> this is how I eat in a restaurant, so I don't even have to engage with clowns. I love that you just acted out what you think well, it clowns, was also, I what th you think clowns do. Well, of course, clowns, like if you engage with a clown, you know Neil Patrick Harris, this is what it's like with him. He's a if, magician. Well, he's, oh, okay, fine, it's a, it's a slippery slope. But, <laughs> but you know, if you engage with a clown, all of a sudden they're like, oh, let me show you a flower. You know? Oh, now he's a sad clown. Sad clown, you know what I mean? If you, of course, of course, Anderson's clown is a sad. No, clown. if you don't. God forbid no, you have a happy clown. No, no, because then if the clown does the flower and you don't take the flower, then it's like sad clown. <laughs> and then they follow you on the street and they're going like this. That's a mime. That's a mime. I know, but clowns do mime too. <laughs> clowns are multifaceted. They're magicians. They're mimes. They're 
They're, I don't you know, they're amazing. They're amazing. Clowns, send all of your hate mail to Send Anderson. in the clowns. <laughs> <laughs> send in the clowns. Um, did you see this couple? It's so amazing. Okay, so uh, I think they're a British couple. Thrilled by this. But... I'm, this is like the greatest thing. I was noticing this on camera, mm -hmm. but like, it's a daily affirmation for you. Live, Kelly. <laughs> live. Just live. Live. That's, That's right. great. That when we go on the Every page... time a little coffee. Live, yeah. Kelly. Live, Just Kelly. Live. That is what she says. To live every morning when she looks in the mirror. Live, Kelly. Live. <laughs> one more, just At one three more. Three in the morning. One more day. Yes. <laughs> when you get here. Um, so now you used to be uh, an. These yeah. <laughs> that That's happened. To keep it's a off. twisty. It's actually wow. they sell them a late night infomercial. Holy moly! It's great for your abs. <laughs> Engage the core. <laughs> exactly. I think I was doing that this morning. We're in fact, all during the interview. <laughs> We're just gonna sit here doing like this. You know what? <laughs> you guys go get the go get the shake weights and back. Go oh dear, get the shake weights. We'll do the shake weight while we do the, our core. Um, you were a teacher, which I did not know this before. I was. When, were you an acting teacher or? Uh -huh. I'm no yes. kidding. Uh, well, High school or I didn't say I was a good teacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh, when I was in college, like I was raised by a single mom, like whatever. I was in mm -hmm. daycare and after school and all that stuff uh, because my mom worked. Right. Um, so when I was in college, uh, I remember being like, when I was like a little boy growing up, there was never any guys in daycare. It was all women. Huh. So when I when I I went to the to the local daycare and I was like, you know, here's the thing, and I, I would like to help. And the lady was like, no, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hiring you. And I was like, but let me finish. It's actually, and she ended up hiring me. I worked there for three years, like my my last couple years of college. I worked at a daycare, and then when I went, I graduated. I started uh, teaching back at my old high school because oh, cool. a similar thing. Like I, I wanted to give something back. I felt like I owed a lot to the school. Wow. Um, and um, and the the theater department had sort of exploded after I had graduated. For it wasn't because of what anything I had done, but uh, that just people were into it. Wow. And so they were kind of overworked. And so I came back and taught for a year. And you had some famous people. Well, in fact, yeah, famous. one of my one of my students is who I'm now working with on her show. Uh, is uh, Ellie Kemper from Unbreakable Kimmy no Schmidt. Kidding. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So, you know, that's that's <laughs> yes, look at that. <laughs> look at Ellie. That is so great. It was it was very cool. And even at 15, like she was an incredibly and like composed, very smart, hardworking actress. Do you actress. still have Do you still have the urge, like as you're on set together, to to, to tell her that she's yeah, doing something wrong? Yeah, to tell her what she's doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she would love that. Yeah, just give her notes. Uh, no, 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 no. She is. Uh, she is. I mean, even back then, she knew what she was doing. But it's really cool to. It's great to see something like that happen to somebody who you genuinely have like nothing but the best. Well, you probably created quite a spark in her and in a lot of your students because I, that's how. I mean, that's what. Well, it happened to me with almost all my teachers. Like I have, so I still have uh, like communication and emails back and forth yeah. with a lot of my teachers, and like it's important. It's yeah. great. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I love when my teachers show up here in the so audience, dust. and I'm like, oh, we're in dust. They didn't even realize they still Aww. had them. They put them on and look, they still fit. And they look great. They look they? great, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, I, I gotta say, it. I look like the guy now. <laughs> no, you don't. I do. You I look don't. like I look more like the guy now than the guy then. When did that happen? Well, it's 50 years ago. I know, but do you remember when you were the, when you were the youngest person in the room? Has everyone had this experience? Like, I feel like I used to yeah. be the youngest person in the room. Well, you were. All of a sudden, I'm no longer the youngest person in the room. There's people born like in the 2000s in my office. It's, yeah. I'm like, I make a reference about, you know, I don't know, Sheila E. And there's a blank stare. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. I mentioned Billy Idol, and they're like, huh? huh? What? I w I'm looking at schools, uh, high schools for Joaquin, because right. he's going to graduate this year. So I've been uh, looking at high schools. And there was a girl uh, doing some work, and they were showing me the work she was doing. And she was doing a, re she was doing a, a project on um, uh, Scream Queens. And I said, oh, I love the show Scream Queens. And she looked at me, and she goes, but aren't you, like, from the 1900s? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I am. Oh my gosh. And I said, not only that, I have a son from the 19th. <laughs> because that is such a depressing way to think it's about such it. A crazy We're from the 1900s. 1900s. But we are, a lot of us are from the 1900s. Yeah. Because that was a whole like that's 100 years. So ago. sad. Yeah. That's so sad. Wow. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy.
crazy, That right? is crazy. That is nuts. I also saw this thing online that um, uh, just, you know, you you drink coffee. I do drink right. coffee. Right. I've, I've had like one cup because on, like on television. It. Yeah, I tried it once on TV. I didn't like it. 35% um, of Americans said they'd rather suffer through the workday with the flu than forego morning coffee. Oh. Is coffee that good? I don't understand. <laughs> Is it really? Amazing. I don't, what's the... What, how can anything be that good? Like and that you, you know how you like that brown liquid, whatever that is? Is that a Diet Coke you're drinking? It's a Coke Zero. A Coke Zero. Yeah, yeah. It's a Coke Zero. Yeah, but I don't need it. I don't crave it. I, 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 if it was between the flu and my Coke Zero, I'd, I'd go, I'd go for yeah, I'd go for my Coke Zero. But well, that well, exactly. Make any that's sense, what but, they're saying. No, but I, they're I would not rather have the flu than my Coke. <laughs> Is that what they're saying? They'd rather have they, the they'd flu? They'd rather have the flu than go away, than not have their morning cup of coffee. Huh. I disagree with that. I think that that's an extreme, and I think that maybe those are people but that don't... The other thing is, like, you're talking about British people. Like, a tea is the other thing I don't understand. I mean, I like tea. Tea, don't get me wrong. I, the tea community, please do not send me emails. <laughs> but that looks Yes, great. three years ago. Was that on a, on a cruise? Yes. We went on the Norwegians. First cruise I was ever on. How was it? Wonderful, I loved it. Nice. How long was the cruise for? Uh, seven days. Oh, wow, Perfect. nice and long time. How can yeah. you tell she's on a cruise? I can barely see the photo. Well, I, I, I didn't think, think it's she giving was... me like an optical illusion. Well, I, I know, but well, I don't know. That I just... was on a port of call when we stopped at Saint Martin. I figure that's like the oh, backdrop on the boat. Yeah, it, it was uh, at a call at one of the ports we oh, stopped at. One of the ports at. of call. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, cool. All right, Joyce, we're gonna spin the wheel, see what you're playing for, okay? <laughs> I love your hair like that, Kelly. Oh, thanks. I do too, yeah. Thanks a lot. What do you, what do you call that? Uh, 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 two, uh, bra two braids. And two the braids. Okay, two yeah. Braids. I, I call was calling it, two it braids. sort of a Heidi of the Mountain. Braid. Or a Heidi of yeah, the yeah. Mountain. Yeah, yeah. Like a Pippi Longstocking. Or a Pippi Longstocking. Remember Pippi Longstocking? Of course. I am Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> <laughs> she scared me as a kid. Anyway, she was a little scary. A Pippi. Uh, Joyce. There was something going on with Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> I'm just saying. Joyce, listen to this. You're playing for the Westin Kaanopoli uh, Ocean Resort Villas in Maui. I never told Ooh, that is my actually dream place to go to. What? You what? That is my dream place oh to go God. to. Oh, my God. All right. Okay, listen. It's seven crossed. days, six nights, one-bedroom villa. It includes a spa treatment per person. This trip is a uh, prize valued at $10,400. It's provided by Hotels.com. 20 seconds, one guess. Anderson's going to read the question. Don't screw it up, Joyce. All right. Okay. Brian Cranston appeared on yesterday's show. On what sitcom did we say Brian played a dentist? Uh, gosh. Talked about it yesterday. Big sitcom. Uh, oh, never. No. Uh, just on. name a big sitcom. Um, name the biggest sitcom you can think of. Bob, Bob uh, Newhart. Oh. Uh, that's a good guess. It's a good guess. You know what? That's no. a good guess. Uh, it's Seinfeld. Oh. Oh. Uh. I'm sorry. Oh, that was my actually dream place to go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, Anderson, Anderson gave you that horrible clue. Uh. <laughs> Mr. President gave you a bad clue. Oh, I'm Listen, sorry. you're still going to get a great okay. prize, Joyce. You and a lucky member of our studio audience will each receive a $500 gift certificate from IKEA. So please pick a number between 1 and 226. Uh, 165. Oh, there we go. Congratulations, we've got a great show for you. John Hamm is here, so stick around. We'll be right back. And yeah, you know, and Marmoset is like, it's a monkey. Yeah, I, you a said monkey. Marmoset, and I was like, what is that? Yeah. I thought a Marmoset was some sort of mule, yeah. no, but it's not. It's first a of all, monkey. Uh, it would be amazing. I would love to have a marmoset. I think it's an exotic animal, and you shouldn't have exotic animals as pets. But marmosets are great. I'm not knocking marmosets for the marmoset community out there. Please don't send me emails. Uh, Too late. And Too it's great late. if he wants to bring it on. I have no problem with it. But can you imagine if, like, a marmoset got loose on your flight and, like, throwing poop at you and yeah. just, like, all the things that I imagine a marmoset does? My favorite thing about him, though, is his job is he's very stressed because his job, he works... Uh, he has to travel every week because he works on innovative lighting for growing cannabis. 
Oh, I'm like, that's... How stressful is that? Ah. Like, you know, I mean, and isn't the whole idea of the cannabis to, like, de-stress you in the first place? So... Isn't it? Isn't anyway, it? yeah. I didn't know, I didn't know that don't was a... Don't act like you don't know. They're but like... I also didn't know that was a job. You could have a job, like, I'm a lighting designer for cannabis. First I... of all, that's a genius job. And second <laughs> of all, you should, you could get an emotional support animal. You think? Yes, your job is so stressful. I could be your emotional support animal. <laughs> could you imagine me with a little collar, like, emotional support? I do, no, I, I have a friend who has a dog, who travels with a dog, and has this thing on it that says, like, comfort animal. I'm like, you're not a service member. You, right. you like, you don't have a stressful job. What, what, you know, it's like, I like traveling with my pet. I was like, I get it, but I don't know. It, I feel, I feel it sort of takes away from those who really do need. Yeah, no, I agree yeah. because a lot of people are cracking down on that and they're making it hard for people. Right, they're making it hard for people who have people legitimate. People actually right. have a reason. Yes. Um, have you been following the scary clowns that are popping up? I don't understand the scary clowns. First of all, I've always been scared of clowns. So I feel like the rest of the country is Has just, just catching, up to, catching up to me. Right. And again, I don't. <laughs> Don't want to upset the clown community. Right. Um, please address your emails to Kelly Ripa. Yeah. No, uh, they know the clowns know I'm with them because we already did like a whole thing that regular clowns are perfectly safe and still. Absolutely. Charlie no, there's and nothing and better than a regular they're clown. They're good for your health. Um, but I heard Ronald McDonald had to go into hiding. That's what I was going to yes. tell you. Ronald McDonald has gone into hiding. Yeah. And now I say to you, the bad clowns have won because if I can't see Ronald McDonald when I'm buying my fillet. Of fish, what's the point of going to McDonald's? Uh, I'm I, so sad about it. It's very strange. I don't quite understand the clown, but it's a whole thing. Like a lot of kids are, are, are worried about this. At first, you know, if I my daughter came home from school and she said, why didn't you tell me about the clowns? And I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, the clowns, the clowns that are sweeping across the country. Uh -huh. And I said, well, first of all, um, it's been in every newspaper and it's been on the news every night. So maybe you should get off Instagram and check in with the world <laughs> because uh -huh. that's where I... Uh, I'm just glad it's over. I'm glad my, my <laughs> debate is over. And now, you know, then on to the next one next week. What would happen if they called you and said, we need you to do the other debate? I think I'm good. I think I'm done. I, I, I think I'm. I, You're good for this my cycle. Hair, my hair turned gray, and uh, you know, yeah. So, you mean even grayer? Even grayer. I feel like it did. I feel like yeah. I feel like I had a little bit of pepper left in there somewhere, no, and now still, it's all still, gone. I'm going to tell you because I because I told then. you I, I do study you a little bit, and there you still have just the tiniest right back here. There's yeah, one little tiny little, little, little pepper patch. I'm hoping pepper the pepper will come back. I'd like to. Uh, so I flew down there, um, you know, to, to St. Louis, and you, you know I'm obsessed. You know, I fly a lot, and when you fly a lot, you become obsessed with how people behave. And we've talked about this before. We talk about the uh, people the don't know how to behave on airplanes anymore. No. And uh, every flight attendant agrees with me on this. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, people they take off their shoes and they put their hobbit feet up, and uh, it's it's always. How you know, dare you refer to my feet as hobbit? No, uh, but it's it's never someone with like lovely feet like yours. It's always like Frodo Baggins, you know, <laughs> with their big hobbit feet up. I was literally on a plane once years ago. Someone was clipping their toenails. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pew! Pew! Yep. And uh, so now there's. A, I saw this article about uh, people with comfort pets. Yes. And you know, people. There are leg you know amazing service animals that uh, I have lots of friends who have served overseas who have service animals. Yeah, people that, have genuine needs genuine needs for, right, for these emotional support. But animals. then there's some folks who don't necessarily have genuine needs, but want to travel with their beloved pet, which I totally get. I have a dog. I would love to travel with my dog, but my dog's not a comfort dog or a service dog. My dog's just a dog. Right. Uh, and so now I guess the TSA is trying to figure out how to kind of crack down on this because all these people are just bringing their pets on and like sort of sewing a little uh, a thing co on collar on it saying comfort monkey, you know, and, monkey. and so they interview a guy here named Jason uh, who brings his marmoset um, on flights with him. And yeah, you know, and marmoset is like, it's a monkey. Yeah, it's, it's I, you said monkey. marmoset and I was like, what is that? Yeah. I thought a marmoset was some sort of mule, yeah. no, but it's not. It's first a of monkey. all, 
Uh, it would be amazing. I would love to have a marmoset. I think it's an exotic animal and you shouldn't have exotic animals as pets. But marmosets are great. I'm not knocking marmosets for the marmoset community out there. Please don't send me emails. Uh, too late. And too, it's too great late. if he wants to bring it on. I have no problem with it. But can you imagine if like a marmoset got loose on your flight and like throwing poop at you and yeah. just like all the things that I imagine a marmoset does? My favorite thing about him though is his job is, he's very stressed because his job, he works uh, he has to travel every week because he works on innovative lighting for growing cannabis. Oh, I'm like, that's... with comfort pets. Yes. And, you know, people, there are, you know, amazing service animals that uh, I have lots of friends who have served overseas who have service animals. Yeah, people that, have genuine needs. Genuine needs, for right, for these emotional support. Right. But then there's some folks who don't necessarily have genuine needs but want to travel with their beloved pet, which I totally get. I have a dog, I would love to travel with my dog. But my dog's not a comfort dog or a service dog. My dog's just a dog. Right. Uh, and so now I guess the TSA is trying to figure out how to kind of crack down on this because all these people are just bringing their pets on and like sort of sewing a little uh, thing on that. collar on it saying comfort monkey, you know. Comfort and, monkey. And so they interview a guy here named Jason uh, who brings his marmoset um, on flights with him. And yeah, you know, and marmoset is like, it's a monkey. Yeah, it's, it's I, you said marmoset, monkey. and I was like, what is that? Yeah. I thought a marmoset was some sort of mule, yeah. no, but it's not. Uh, it's first a of all, monkey. Uh, it would be amazing. I would love to have a marmoset. I think it's an exotic animal, and you shouldn't have exotic animals as pets. But marmosets are great. I'm not knocking marmosets for the marmoset community out there. Please don't send me emails. Uh, too late. And too, it's too great late. if he wants to bring it on. I have no problem with it. But can you imagine if, like, a marmoset got loose on your flight and, like, throwing poop at you and yeah. just, like, all the things that I imagine a marmoset does? My favorite thing about him, though, is his job is he's very stressed because his job, he works... Uh, he has to travel every week because he works on innovative lighting for growing cannabis. Oh, I'm like, that's... How stressful is that? Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, and isn't the whole idea of the cannabis to, like, de-stress you in the first place? So... Isn't it? Isn't anyway, it? yeah. I what? didn't know, I didn't know that don't was Don't act a... like you don't know. They're but like... I also didn't know that was a job. You could have a job, like, I'm a lighting designer for cannabis. First I... of all, that's a genius job. And second <laughs> of all, you should, uh, you could get an emotional support animal. You think? Yes, your job is so stressful. I could be your emotional support animal. <laughs> can you imagine me with a little collar, like, emotional support? I do, no, I, I have a friend who has a dog, who travels with a dog, and has this thing on it that says like comfort animal. I'm like, you're not a service member. You right. like, you don't have a stressful job. What, what, you know, it's like, I like traveling with my pet. I was like, I get it, but I don't know. It, I feel, I feel it sort of takes away from those who really do need. Yeah, no, I agree yeah. because a lot of people are cracking down on that and they're making it hard for people. Right, they're making it hard for people who have people legitimate. People actually right. have a reason. Yes. Um, have you been following the scary clowns that are popping up? I don't understand the scary clowns. First of all, I've always been scared of clowns. So I feel like the rest of the country is Has just, just catching, come, up come, to catching up to me. Right. And again, I don't. <laughs> Don't want to upset the clown community. Right. Um, please address your emails to Kelly Ripa. Yeah. No, uh, they know the clowns know I'm with them because we already did like a whole thing that regular clowns are perfectly safe and still strangers. My yeah. kids feel that way about your house because you have fancy cereal and they're like Anderson has fancy cereal. You don't give your kids fancy cereal? Well, I never let them have fancy cereal. I use special K cinnamon pecan cereal. Right. That's my fancy cereal. No, but to them that's fancy cereal. Oh, okay. Because I, like, I'm you don't not, do sugared cereal. I'm not a big sugar cereal really? person. Yeah, I am more like a hot breakfast kind for of For breakfast, when I was a kid, I could eat whatever I'd want. Like, if I would eat something, so I would, for the, I'd go for months, like for a month, I'd eat coffee ice cream for breakfast. Then I'd switch to a baked potato for breakfast. <laughs> and then I'd have spaghetti for breakfast. I would go through food periods. I love it so much. Yeah, that's... I just want to put a, I want you to go home and live with your mom for a month, and I just want to put a documentary camera in there and just watch. <laughs> I just want to watch what goes on right now, present day. I think, I, no, I, I don't think I could last a month. Oh, Oh, we'll do it for a week. We'll do it for a weekend. All right. Hey, we got a big show today. John Hamm is here. That's right. This is the new uh, series, Mini Drivers here. A performance by Daya. And we're going to reveal who you voted for to be the 10 semifinalists in Live with Kelly and you co-host search. I'm yes, very excited to see a, that. You're, are you? I am. I actually know one of the people who's in the uh, finalist, I believe. Stop it. Yes. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. No, I, I, I hope okay. she gets it. All right, it's time for uh, Takeoff Travel Trivia, everybody. <laughs> New York.
Park is Sabrina Shaw. Hey. Great. Yeah. adorable. I like in this graphic how my hair disappears into the sky. Oh, yeah. Do you notice that? We should move the sky up a little so it's more, yeah. There's I'll just sit like this. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You're adorable. Uh, I'm a uh, loser. Hey, uh, say hi to Joyce Sprotlin from a Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Hey, Joyce, how's it going? Hi. Fine. Hi. hi. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah. What are you up to today? How's uh, um, how's the weather there in Ohio? I'm going to later today, and it's very pretty out. Oh, nice. Really, really good to see you guys. And Anderson, I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I think you should run for president. <laughs> that's an amazing idea, Joyce. <laughs> I think so. I've always thought that. Well, that's very sweet. He's a very reasonable person and a hard worker. <laughs> I was on my honeymoon here. I, on on oh. the boat? That looks that looks Yes, great. three years ago. Was that on a on a cruise? Yes. We went on the Norwegian. First cruise I was ever on. How was it? Wonderful. I loved it. Nice. How long was the cruise for? Uh, seven days. Oh, wow. Perfect. Nice and long time. You just get better and better at these debates and I wonder do you do a lot of debate prep yourself because you always yeah. hear about the candidates yeah you do you spend I mean we spend uh, weeks you know prepping with research and you know uh, we have a whole team of people who are you know sitting in a room in Washington and New York trying to think up questions and then really the last week is the most intense I flew down to Washington I spent the week with my team and it's, it's like planning a, a future game of three-dimensional chess so you're trying to sort of plan out, well, if I ask this question to this candidate, then, the, you know, then we'll toss to this person. And so you try to plan out as much as possible. But, right. you know, there's no way to predict what's going to happen. Uh, the, other, the thing that amazed me about this one is the biggest winner, I think, and the biggest star that came out of the debate was Kenneth Bone. Oh, Ken Bone, yes. Energy. Energy. Who... Um, Asked a, 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 such a sweet guy. I had a chance to talk to him before <laughs> uh, the debate, and also I interviewed him afterward. And it's funny, you know, the reason he was wearing this sweater, he said, is because he, uh, he, his father, before he passed away, had helped him pick out a really nice suit. And so Ken wanted to wear the suit that his father had helped him pick out. But when he got into the car to go to the debate, his pants split open because he's gained a few pounds from the right, time right. when right. he uh, bought the suit. I just, so he had to do an emergency decision and he decided to go for the red Christmas suit. He made the smartest decision of Best his life. Decision I mean, ever. guys, right. we can all agree if Ken had been wearing, because he said it was like an olive colored suit, right. he would not have popped he the popped. way he popped. No, and he had a really very serious question about energy policy yeah. he got to ask and he was enthusiastic about it. So, and I also love the fact that, like, I guess Am uh, Amazon, I think, has sold out. Out of oh, this red yes. Sweater. Yeah. No, they've sold out yeah. completely. And that there's all these people who want to dress up for him. Like, there's people ha that's the dressing Halloween up for costume. him as Halloween. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Isn't that incredible? Yeah, Andy Cohen and I are doing a show in St. Louis on Saturday. I'm hoping Ken's going to come. Oh, is he going to come? I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping he is. I, I, I bet called he will. Yeah, uh, I called him. Wait, so. you called him? So now you guys are on a phone name basis? Well, I like mean, you're uh, on a phone? He, he, was on, he was on my show the other night. And I was like, and so I said, like, oh, if you want to come to our show in St. Louis, you should come. He was like, oh, yeah, I think I will. So I was like, okay. Oh, my God. You guys see how easy it is? <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. Uh, oh, my gosh. That is exciting. I, I'm uh, just glad it's over. I'm glad my, my <laughs> debate is over now, you know. Know, then on to the next one next week. What would happen if they called you and said, we need you to do the other debate? I think I'm good. I think I'm done. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm... I, You're good for this my hair, My hair turned gray and, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, you mean even grayer? Even grayer. I feel like it did. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I had a little bit of pepper left in there somewhere. No, and there's now still, it's all still, gone. I'm going to tell you, because I, I told then. you, I, I do study you a little bit. And there, you still have just the tiniest right back here. There's yeah, one little, little tiny little, little, little pepper patch. I'm little hoping pepper the pepper patch. will come back. I'd like to. Uh, so